Today we are concluding the season on the parables of Jesus Christ. Shortly before his crucifixion, Jesus gave an insight to his second coming. And we will learn that there will be but two classes, the obedient children of God and the disobedient. Jesus used a practical example of the sheep and the goats to make a short yet fundamentally important comparison. Let's find out why. At the beginning of the season, we learned that Jesus used parables to teach spiritual truth by means of earthly situations. And in these parables of the sheep and the goats, Jesus tells or describes and predicts the judgment of all people. He begins the parable by saying, When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, He will sit on His glorious throne. This is found in Matthew chapter 25, verse 31. This gives an insight to the fulfillment time of the parable, which is at His return. We repeatedly covered this in the previous season. All will be brought before the Lord, and He will separate them as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on His right and the goats on His left. Let's take a closer look at this parable. The sheep and the goats are mixed together. They look very similar, yet the shepherd separates them. The center of this parable is the shepherd who is Son of Man, referring to Jesus. At the end of the time, he will be the judge. He knows the way that people have behaved here on earth, and he is making the point that actions do determine our acceptance of salvation, because we show what we believe by what we do. Our actions reveal the truth. We read in Matthew 25, verses 34 through 36. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. The sheep also, referred as the righteous, will ask the king when they have done these things for him. And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Matthew 25, verse 40. What happens to the goats, or those on his left? The king speaks to those on his left, saying they are condemned and not allowed to come in. And he goes on to explain why. We read this in Matthew 25, verses 44 through 46. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer to them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And this will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Bible uses many times the analogy of the sheep and the goats. But what about two animals that is so different? Goats are generally capricious and stubborn. They are impulsive, unpredictable, and are not very good followers. A goat follows only its own lead, creating disunity when it comes in contact with others in the flock. A sheep, on the other hand, follows its shepherd, peacefully moving forward with the flock. Sheep is content to be led because he has faith in the shepherd and follows his voice. When first reading this parable, it is suggested that salvation is the result of good works. The sheep acted charitably, giving food, drink, and clothing to the needy. The goats, however, showed no charity. This seems to result in salvation for the sheep and damnation for the goats. But the scripture never contradicts itself. And the Bible clearly teaches us that salvation is by faith and through grace of God and not by our good works. In fact, Jesus himself makes it clear in the parable that the salvation of the sheep is not based on their works. Their inheritance was theirs 
since the creation of the world. Long before they could ever do any good works. We read that in Matthew chapter 25, verse 34. The good works that Christ describes are not the cause of salvation, but the effect of salvation. As we come closer to Christ and become like Him, we read in Galatians that we will have the fruits of the Spirit, patience, kindness, goodness, etc., and all the good works in our life will be because of this. Jesus also tells His disciples that the difference between the true and false followers is in the fruits. You will know them by their fruits. We can read this in Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 through 20. Good works will result from our relationship with the shepherd, who is Jesus Christ. While goats can indeed perform acts of kindness and charity, their hearts are not right with God and their actions are not for the right purpose, to honor and worship God. In this parable, we are looking at men redeemed and saved and men condemned and lost. The more we understand what the Bible actually says, and the more of a reality it becomes to us, the more we are changed permanently. Today, the invitation still stands. Come unto me all. While there is still a chance we can make a change and be in a group of people, they will stand on his right hand. And how can you continue to change? By studying and strengthening yourself in Scripture daily.